Good evening. Thank you all for coming this, uh, this evening. As we join together for a solemn event to commemorate the 23rd year since the tragic events of September 11th, 2001. I'm sure many of us can vividly recall the exact moment we learned of the unthinkable had happened. September 11, 2001 is a day that is etched into our hearts and memories as, it, as, it, as if it occurred just yesterday. It is a day that altered the course of our nation as we know it and claimed the lives of nearly 3,000, including 147 Bergen County residents whose names are listed on the two replicas of the towers. While we must continue to honor all the lives lost on that fateful day, we must also acknowledge that lives are still being claimed by those attacks 23 years later. Many first responders and volunteers who risked their lives to go through the rubble to ground zero are now living with serious health conditions as a result of toxic chemicals released by the collapse of the Twin Towers. September 11th was the single deadliest day in American history for emergency responders. And still, more first responders have died since due to health complications linked to 9-11 than first responders who died that faithful day. <clears throat> Instead of being honored for their courage and bravery, these heroes are suffering. But we have the power to help them. Champions for the 9-11 first responders such as the late Joseph Zagroga, fought, for the pass, for, fought to pass life-saving legislation as the James Zagroga 9-11 Health and Compensation Act. Since the, the Zadroga Act was passed in 2010, more than 175,000 people, 175,000 people, with health complications linked to 9-11 have received free care and medical monitoring as of August 2024. Every single day, more and more people are discovering that they have been affected by 9-11 related health conditions, leading to increased enrollment in these programs. Because of this increased enrollment, Critical funding is at a risk of running out. 23 years later, we are still trying to understand the impact that the September 11th attacks have had on our first responders. And while I talk about mostly first responders, also all the people that were down there that day and the effects on them are no different. The people that came after, that worked on the pile, that worked in Staten Island, where all of that toxic soup was brought, was affected. That is why we must push our federal legislators to establish permanent permanent funding for our first responders and all those who are suffering from the health effects of 9-11. We should not have to fight for reauthorization every few years. Permanent funding ensures that even 100 years down the road, anyone suffering from the effects of that horrendous attack on our nation will be able to get the help they deserve. What role can you play? Your role is to write your congressmen and your senators. Take two minutes out of your day 
to write to them to say permanently fund the 9-11 compensation. Permanently fund the Zadroga bill. But you don't have to convince those legislators from New Jersey. The ones you have to convince are the ones that voted no. The ones that are in Texas and Missouri. Because it didn't happen in their backyard, they don't feel the pain we feel. They don't see the families every year like we do. We do. So what can you do? Take a few moments, especially us in the emergency services, especially us in the fire service, who not only lost 343 firefighters that day, but we've lost more than those 343 since. So yes, there is something we can do. We can make a difference. We can never stop talking about September 11, nor should we. We must continue to teach our children and the future generations about that faithful day so that it may never fade from the conscience of our great nation. We must continue to advocate for our first responders, share stories about our loved ones, respect each other, and be there for one another. Through unity, we shall heal, we shall grow, and we shall never forget. The two days after the attack, then President George Bush came to New York City. He stood on the mound, a smoldering mound of rubble, with his arm around a firefighter, with a megaphone, and urged our country to come together as one nation, to put our differences together and support one another. <laughs> 23 years later, I'm not sure that we're at that place. But the good news is we can make it different and we can change things. So let us come together. Let us use this day to remind us that we're all one with the United States of America. Anyone can live here, anyone should feel the ability to feel free to live here, no matter who they are, what they are, and what they believe in. So today as we leave here, let's reflect. Let's remember those that are no longer with us. Let's pray for those that are ill. And let's pray that we have peace in this country and around the world. Thank you.